is Friday. It is Friday. You know what that means? Fridays at RP. So this week, uh, this week, this week's episode, but today, Friday, August 21st, we have a stilly ganglion block uh, for a patient who uh, has had a lot of traumatic experiences uh, specifically with, with his knees. And so part of our, our treatment for helping his knee pain overall is actually helping to uh, work through some of those traumatic experience that he has with his knees. So uh, I believe this is our third or fourth stellate ganglion block on this patient. Uh, and we might try to actually get some film of this procedure um, so that way you guys can kind of see a little bit more behind the scenes for this Friday's at RP. But that's what we got for today and then a lot of clinical catch up, good old charting, and just the other things to run a business. Let's get to it. All right, stay tuned. All right, so we are about uh, 45 minutes away from our stellate ganglion block procedure. So we're going to go ahead and get our procedure room set up. Uh, that way, uh, when the patient gets here, we are ready to rock and roll. Uh, the muscle in the middle of the screen there is our, uh, our anterior scalene. We have our middle scalene. Above that's our SCM. So there's our inner scalene brachial plexus. You see when we go up, you see it drop into the mm -hmm. frame in there. Remember, seven doesn't really have a anterior tubercle, so we're not seeing that there. And then we continue to go cephalad, and then we see at that one centimeter mark, the hypocoke structure, that's gonna go inside the big cup. And there's our anterior. That's still a relatively small one compared to what we normally see. Just hit mute the, the volume thing right below the bell. This? Yeah. Let's just do that. muscle there at the one centimeter mark. Mm -hmm. That's our longest uh, capitis. And then the longest coli is gonna be deep to that. And I actually think that the, that hyperechoic structure uh, at the one and a half centimeter mark below longus capitis, that's that's probably his cervical sympathetic chain. The standard size for it. So that is our that's our location. Okay. 
Does this one? Does it set? Does it set it? Yeah, what is the setting? Uh, superficial anesthesia. Can I get a sterile for before? All right, so we just finished up our stellate ganglion block, uh, which is our only procedure for today. So to kind of walk you through it, because we did get some film, and you're going to see some of that here. Mark put that in. But uh, what we did was basically under ultrasound guidance, we are looking for the cervical sympathetic chain. Now, technically, the stellate ganglion lies at about the level of C7T1. But because of the higher risk of uh, uh, basically perforating the lung, what we do is we actually do the injection a little bit more cephalad. So we kind of do the injection over the C6, C7 region, which technically it's the cervical sympathetic chain. But when we inject the local anesthetic or whatever medicine we're using, we get spread down the fascial plane that we inject into which then uh, ends up bathing the stellate ganglion. So under ultrasound, we look for the structure that is known as Chazanax tubercle, which is the anterior tubercle of the transverse process of C6. 
Once we find that, then we find the longus coli muscle, which is one of the muscles that lies up against the actual vertebral body, kind of in the groove in between the vertebral body and the anterior tubercle uh, of the uh, transverse process. Then we make sure that the path is clear. We're not going to hit any blood vessels, anything like that, any nerves, because obviously we've got a lot of a lot of anatomy going on in this area. So it's a very highly technical procedure. But then we're going to advance our needle onto and into the fascia that is uh, basically on the front side of longus coli, and preferably at the basically the corner where longus coli and longus capitis meet because that's usually where that stellate or that cervical sympathetic chain is going to lie uh, and then we do our injection so today we used a combination of ropivacaine which is a longer acting and local anesthetic and we added in a little bit of dextrose the dextrose is going to have a calming uh, nourishing effect on the uh, sympathetic chain and then the local anesthetic is where we're going to get the big heavy hitter of actually dampening that sympathetic outflow from the uh, through the cervical sympathetic chain, which then is where we see our uh, long-term positive response uh, in terms of uh, PTSD, uh, anxiety, and trauma. Although super interesting is there is some research uh, that actually looks at using just D5W for um, the stellate ganglion hydrodissection, because technically it's not a block, uh, but that is right now used, uh, or the research that, uh, that has been done on that is looking more so just at chronic pain syndromes, not the PTSD component. Um, and I don't think that the D5W on its own would probably have enough of an impact, but we've been experimenting and kind of combining the two and trying to see if we notice uh, any additional outcomes. So that was our procedure for the day. Um, it is just about four o'clock here. And so we are probably gonna get out of here early, which is always nice, always nice. So. Thank you all for watching episode, I think this is three, episode three of Fridays at RP. And let me know in the comments what you all want to hear more about, see more about, and we'll try to incorporate uh, that into this new series. And tell your friends, if you want to see behind the scenes stuff where we talk about these procedures, tell your friends. See you later.